Hey everybody, Jeff Reinhardt here, LMP in Lancaster Online. Welcome into week three. Week three of the LL Football Roundtable, sponsored by Auto House of Lancaster. I got two stats for you. The first stat is minus 48. The second stat is 36. Peckway Valley Football has given up minus 48 rushing yards, and the Braves are giving up just 36 yards a game. They're 2-0. They're going for a 3-0 start Friday night for the first time since 2016. What's going on in the water here in Kinzers, and why are the Braves playing so good? Let's go find out. Okay, you guys got to be walking uh, walking proud down here, 2-0 start. Yeah. Just kind of speak overall to the start and being 2-0 and what's, yeah. what that's doing for your morale right now. Yeah, uh, there's definitely an increase in, like, energy, I'd say. We're all really stoked to be 2-0. I mean, it's not something Peckway history has seen very much. And uh, I think it's overall brought up the morale. It seems like everyone's trying to work hard. Um, it's really good for the second team, for them to be able to get the opportunity to get in there, too. Um, I think that's one of the reasons we were able to go 2-0. We have a ton of depth. Your defense is getting some pub here. You're number one in the league. You haven't even given up plus yardage yet on the, on the ground, and you're only giving up 36 yards a game. And you haven't given up a point yet. Have you pinched yourself over the success of your defense yet, or were you guys kind of hoping to get that start defensively? Yeah, I mean, we saw it coming. We've put in the work all off season, and Coach does a great job of game planning every week. Um, our defense plays with a lot of confidence. When one guy makes a play, it just makes the whole group ready to go after the next play and do better every time. We all have different assignments and reads we're supposed to make, and when someone makes a read, someone else is supposed to go the other way. And like when I make a read, outside backers follow me. I mean, it, it's all. It really is truly a teamwork dynamic out there. Um, if we if we would all be going the same way, we wouldn't have stops. And I think it's also swarming to the ball. You, I mean, other years I think, oh, you see a pile, they got it. I'll stay out of the play. I'll catch my breath. I really this year I really noticed the difference. We're swarming to that ball and we're really playing until the whistle's blown. Last time Peckway Valley was three and zero was in 2016. So you were a little guy. Um, what would, what would that mean to you? Marsville's pretty good. They're going to have a pretty good offense they're bringing here. But to win again and to keep winning and to get to 3-0, and what would that mean to you guys? It would mean a lot. I mean, when you start off high, it tends to go with you the rest of the season. At least that's what we're hoping for. And, um, you know, Peckway hasn't seen a whole lot of winning, but, um, you know, when we get, we, we get going, we can pick up some confidence and uh, go the rest of the year, see how it goes. Definitely people are you know, a little more skeptical, like, wow, are they, are they really going to do something this year? Which, I mean, I see it. I'm out here on the field. I, I know the work we're putting in and how hard we're – I mean, we're working our butts off out here every day, sweating. I mean, it's – yeah. I mean, I think the morale and everything, there's definitely a lot more people. Like, at the game stands were loaded with fans. Seeing that kind of got everyone, like, this is what needs to happen every game and every year. And we are back from Peckway Valley. Thanks to those folks for spending a little time. And we're in the studio for the latest edition of the LL Football Roundtable, brought to you by Auto House of Lancaster. My name is Mike Gross, and I'm hosting these proceedings. And to my left is Jason Guarante. To my right is Jeffrey Reinhardt. And these guys cover high school football for LNPLancasterOnline.com. We're headed to week three, two weeks into the season. Ryan's thoughts. Ooh, thoughts through two weeks. Conestoga Valley's very good. Exeter's really good. Yeah, some teams that have uh, really been impressive. Efforta, so Efforta with a really good win over Central last week. Forced four fumbles. Braden Brown takes a fumble to the house. Efforta really feels like they've arrived. Yeah, I mean, they, that's a they real program. picked yeah. up where they left off from last year, and Efforta's tough. Garden Spot's got crooked numbers everywhere. We talked about the. Notre Dame game uh, a couple of times. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, LS2, I think maybe flying under the radar a, a, a smidge. Uh, LS at 2-0 and with a really good defense. Yeah. And the Caleb House kid is just stepped in. And a in game this week. That maybe and we'll played with a big game against Cocalico. And the Falcons at 2-0. The Falcons. We'll get to the Falcons in a minute, too. My yeah. alma mater. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But first, 
Let's get a Notre Dame Green Pond update from Jason Gore. <laughs> yeah. We're still scoring. They're still putting They're in the still end, in the so. parking lot riding in your car. There you go. There you go. They're lighting it up. They're... Seriously, what did they do last week? I didn't look. No. I'm not sure. <laughs> you should have checked that out. PTSD yeah. from week one. Yeah, I, that's I right. Look. That was scored, a shock. Uh, they scored that was 72 a shock that against uh, somebody. I know Garden awesome. Spot kept scoring. Yeah, so. that's yeah. true. Spot they put did. up 55 again. They they really they're, they're, and it, pretty impressive given that how quarterback oriented they were last year. And that guy's gone and they're still yeah. doing it, right? Yeah. How a are they doing it? What, what, a, AJ Hurst, yeah. you know, the quarterback who probably would have played sooner, but he's, you know, behind Kai Harding, so he has to wait his turn. He's a safety. He had an 80 yard interception return in week one or somewhere in that neighborhood. He has more than 550 yards passing, 10 touchdowns already. Ooh. Great weapons Jace Conrad, Trent Huber. And uh, Andrew Pemberton rushed for more than 150 yards last week, yeah. so they only have a running game to go with it. I mean, just a lot of weapons there. Mm -hmm. Matt Zamperini, more of a defensive guy, mm -hmm. but he's got the high-powered offense, 120 points through two games. Yeah, I think a lot of his good teams over his career have been good offensively, even yeah. though that may yeah. not be his his. Anyway, we we're, were talking about effort and garden spot. They yes. play each other this week. That should be great. Um, and they shared the Section 3 title with Twin Valley last year, played twice last year. Spot one in the regular season handily by 20. After it gets payback, they win the district playoff game 30, 31-10, something like that. Yeah, yeah. We could rattle off garden spot stats forever. Jason hit on a couple of them, but anxious for that game because Ephrata has some mo here coming off central, and uh, they played pretty good. Uh, that's an interesting game for momentum and to see if Ephrata can get to 3-0. and um, Love that game. That's a great local game. Get the New Holland on Friday. Now, the Falcons. There one of the go. teams that we thought lost a lot. They did lose a lot of veteran, multi-sport guys. Mm -hmm. And certainly the bell cow running back in, in Marquez, who yep. is now at IUP, IUP, which is also my alma mater. Wow. And so, the so there you here. go. So anyway, but anyway, Cedar Crest is off to a 2-0 start. Uh, they've scored 90 points. Yeah. Uh, they beat Lower Dauphin and Spring Grove, both of whom won their other game. About that. So they're not, they're not, uh, you know, they, they ought to be at least reasonably competitive opponents. Uh, more than 500 rushing yards so far. They ran for 340 against Lower Dauphin. That's pretty good. Uh, you were thinking that they were missing a running back. Well, they have this kid named Isaiah Zimmerman, mm. a Safamar. Safamar. 30 rushes for 331 yards, 11 yards per carry, four mm. touchdowns in two games. So you can easily see Cedar Crest, you look at their schedule, you can see them getting to maybe eight wins again and maybe. district playoffs again. I mean, I, that's that's looking way ahead. They get Wilson uh, at Wilson week Ooh. five. They get Township at home week seven. Opportunistic. They had two pick sixes last week. There you go. Yeah. I mean, they're just doing stuff. Uh, new coach, Nick Lambros. Yeah, new coach. That's right. New coach, they, Nick Lambros. They're obviously and... picked up, you know, what he's what he's saying. And here are the Falcons. And they're they're at Warwick. Warwick has three points in two yeah, games. Warwick they're 0-2. Yeah, really struggling a smidge. Offensively, yeah. So Crest has a pretty good shot to be 3-0. Hello. Now, the other game that we kind of wanted to feature here is a couple of name brands going at oh, it. Yeah. Uh, Cocalico. <laughs> And uh, Lamb Peter Strasburg, we turn to Jason for this one. LS, two games, nine points allowed. They have that 3-4 scheme with Colin Shelley in the middle of the defense, 6-4, 290. Hello. I mean, just hard to move. And these swarming linebackers, four linebackers who are all fast, who can all hit, who all wear single-digit numbers, which is unusual. <laughs> nice. They're also pass catchers, you know, they play on offense too. So. They haven't given up much. They have. They weren't really tested by Warwick. That will change because Cocalico is usually very good offensively. But Cocalico got shut out last week. So we have a team that posted a shutout playing a team that didn't score any points. Cocalico is going to regroup and they're going to be ready and they're going to have some, uh, you know, fire in their bellies after that loss. Yeah, I expect Cocalico to show up yeah, in this one. So. I, th th I think this is a this is an intriguing matchup. It's interesting that LS. Uh, most teams that play a 3-4 or a, a light front are teams that don't have a lot of big bodies and, mm -hmm. and, and maybe aren't like really consistently big physical teams. But that's not LS. Yeah. They make that work. They yeah. make that system work. Big time. Cocalico was shut out last week for the first time in almost 40 games. That's like four years. So, that's not easy to do. What yeah. they've done the last couple of years, and, and you're right, they, they, they're, they're a program. This was a smack in the face. 
Let's see how they let's see how they respond. I think they probably will respond and make it a competitive yeah, game. And, uh, LS showed up in the state rankings this week, so they're getting noticed across the state here now. And that's another team like Cedar Crest that I underestimated a little bit because mm -hmm. LS lost some trench guys, they yeah. lost some playmakers. We didn't know how House was going to do. He's passed for two hundred. He's rushed for two hundred. He's accounted for like five touchdowns. He's been really, really good. So and he yeah. runs like a fullback he's yes. 200 pounds and he's not you know the quick elusive he'll, he'll run around you but he'll also run over you mm. and ls just hits they hit you hard on defense and they sort of take your the will out of you by the end of the game you don't want anymore because it's so hard to just get first downs it wears you out yeah we knew kukalico was going to have a new line they'll be tested mm -hmm. here in ls because they got some kids up front who yep. can move you so fun game we'll see you in lampeter for that that's going to be a lot of fun we talked at the beginning of the season about a lot of name brand programs that that appear to at least on paper appeared to lose a lot man i'm central was one of those cocalico was one of those they they appear they appear to have some work to do in terms of figuring out who they are and filling some holes a yep, right? little bit i got i got to look at the barons up close uh, and Central will figure it out. I, I picked them to win Section 3 at the end of the day. I still think they'll figure it out. Good up front, pretty good defensively, even though effort to punch some in, but they had some short fields because Central turned it over. Central's lacking that huge big play downfield. I mean, you know, Aaron Enterline's not walking through the door. Zach Hahn's not walking through the door. They did have a really nice the downfield. The power Rick Patino. Yeah, they had a long touchdown pass downfield. Um, just a diff different central team here through two weeks. I still think they'll be fine. And the other eye opener among our big time programs was uh, why I'm missing getting beat uh, last week, which maybe means they just played a really good team. Yeah, this team. Haverford school yeah. must be something else. They held Wyo to 100 yards and like three first downs. Yeah, nobody does that. Nobody does that nobody around does. here. So, wow. I would say Manheim Township was eye opening too. The way they handled Central York and the way they've changed their identity yep. to, to yep. being a hard hitting running offense mm -hmm. instead of the high-flying passing yeah, game. Of the, of the teams we were just talking about, they're the one that does not seem to have missed a beat at all. No, they've picked up. I figured they would with all those linemen back. And Clancy mm -hmm. leads the league in rushing. Hello. We should probably mention one game off the schedule this week. Hamburg. Fairfield. Fairfield struggling. Uh, lack yeah, of, struggling lack of to, kids. to field a team. Oh, uh, and yeah. two. They've been outscored 144 to zero in two That's weeks. Not good. They opted out of their game with Hamburg for the second time in three years. So Fairfield needs to take a long, hard look at their program right now, <laughs> yeah. I think. Sorry, guys. Uh, so we Hamburg, rethink some uh, things. Maybe yeah, Hamburg, one and one, is idle, looking for a game here at midway. Good luck with that. And let's, because we were at Peckway Valley, let's yes. talk a little bit about the fact that wow. the Rhines predicted 3-0 and out of the shoot for them. And it's going to be tricky. They play Morrisville, and they have a pretty good offense, okay. including a running back with almost 500 yards already. Fun pick. Fun Peckway Valley numbers. They've given up minus 48 rushing yards in two games. That's pretty good. <laughs> minus 48? Minus 48. They, they're giving up 36 yards a, uh, a game total. That's number one in the league. They've outscored their opponents 84 to zip first two games. And I know it's week two, week three. But well, the and District also three, it's who they're playing. Yes, of course. District three, three A power ratings. Peckway Valley is at the top on the one yeah. line through two weeks. So let them have their fun. Great start for them. Morrisville is going to be tricky, but um, had a great time down there talking to some kids and watching their practice. And they're a lot. They're a lot of fun. It's nice to see them have some yeah. success. And, All right, man. Yeah, uh, been great. For the good of the order, anything else on your mind, Jason? David Martin Robinson, yeah. Hempfield grad, was back in town at Hempfield's game against York. He's in the NFL. He made the Titans 53-man roster nice. as an undrafted free agent, six-year player at Temple. Wow. Lots of injuries wasn't drafted, mm. wasn't supposed to make it, and he did uh, LL League local boy doing that. That really like that. is pretty cool, and he's a tight end, apparently. Mm -hmm. Apparently that's the position, so he came a long way physically since when we saw him play oh, at Hempfield. Oh, yeah, he was a wiry and, guy. And right? in every yeah. way, apparently. Oh, to, yeah. to, I mean, this dude's in the NFL and as an undrafted free agent. That's, that's pretty strong. Good for him. Way to go. All right, gang. Week three is a coming. Here we go. And uh, this has been the LL Football Roundtable brought to you by Auto House of Lancaster. For Mike Gross, for Jason Barrente, and for Jeffrey Reinhardt. We'll see you next week.